In this video, I'm going to be looking at the Blackmagic Design DaVinci Resolve Mini Panel, this $3,000 color grading panel, and also be talking about the $1,000 version that's kind of just the bottom half of this chopped off. So let's jump right in. First thing off, this thing is pretty big and heavy. There's not really anything mini about it, other than the fact that the bigger version, the $30,000 entire desktop sized version, has kind of been shrunken down to only the essentials for this $3,000 panel interface instrument thing here. But there's also a $1,000 version, which is called the Micro, which is just the bottom half of this, just basically the wheels, some of the knobs and the buttons on the right side. So I'm gonna do a full walkthrough of this one, the mini panel, but I'm also gonna be talking about who this might be for or who would maybe be better off getting the micro panel. This is 16 by 16 inches, and as I set it down here, it's made of die cast aluminum, so it's pretty heavy duty. You're gonna to wanna to make room on your desk for this thing. It's beefy, it's heavy, but it's also high quality. And if you're spending $3,000 on something that's gonna sit on your desk, maybe it costs more than your computer, you're gonna want it to be high quality. And the buttons on this, the knobs, the dials, the wheels, the trackballs, all that stuff are really high quality. This larger one, the mini, needs AC power, where the micro one, the smaller one, can run just off of USB. The bottom half of the $3,000 mini is actually pretty much exactly the same to the $1,000 micro sized one. The only difference really is if you did chop off the top where you lost the screens on the mini version, you also would have to chop off some of the bottom as well where your wrist would kind of rest under the trackballs. I got in touch with Blackmagic Design to borrow this unit to test it out and to do this walkthrough video. But when I was talking with them, they said that this one, the mini, was made to pretty much live on your desk. You could travel with it if you wanted to, but it's pretty big and bulky and you're probably just gonna leave it in one spot. But the $1,000 micro version, that's a little bit more travel friendly. And that one was more designed to have on set, on location, to immediately be doing color grades from the footage that you're filming so you can know if you're getting what you want. But that micro size is also perfect for someone that's just getting started with Resolve or is just getting into color grading and doesn't wanna spend $3,000 on a grading panel. If all you're doing color grading wise in Resolve is maybe doing some correcting of exposure, shadows and highlights, maybe throwing a LUT on, doing one node of adjustments, the micro is probably the version for you. If you're doing multiple nodes, powered windows, and all the other fancy stuff that you can do in Resolve, then the mini one is best. And before I dive into a full walkthrough demo of all the buttons and knobs and everything like that, to minimize some of the comments on this video, no, this does not work with another editing software. It doesn't work with Premiere or Final Cut Pro 10 or iMovie or I don't even know what else, HitFilm, something like that. It only works with DaVinci Resolve, which, is a free program. It does have some limits on it, but for most people, you won't need the things in the paid version. So if you're getting into color grading and stuff like that, I would definitely try out Resolve because it's a very powerful tool. But this panel itself, with all of its buttons that are so specific to Resolve, really the only thing you could use on this would be the trackballs and the wheels maybe in another editing software to do some color touch-ups. But if that's the case, maybe there's another brand out there that has something similar. I haven't tried anything else before. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's do a quick dive into a tour of how you would use this thing, starting with the bottom half, which is, remember, the same as the micro version. To start, you have three weighted trackballs and wheels that control lift, gamma, and gain. If you're not familiar with what those mean, the closest other terms I can think of are shadows, midtones, and highlights. The ball controls the color for shifting lift, gamma, and gain towards or away from a color. So if you wanted to shift the midtones towards orange or teal or what have you, you would just use the trackball to move it. The wheel then adjusts the amount of lift, gamma, or gain. So maybe you're going to turn down the lift on the black point raise the gain on the white point to have more contrast in your image. Above each wheel are RGB, all, and level buttons. DaVinci Resolve is the only NLE software that uses YRGB color science, which can separate chrominance and luminance, which means you can change the brightness without necessarily changing color. 
Normally you'll have all these buttons set to all, but you can click level to control brightness or RGB to control only color. On the panel, there are only three trackballs and wheels, but on the bottom of resolve, when you're color grading, there are four. So to get to that fourth one, the offset, you just hit the offset button on top of the three wheels. And that also enables white balance, color temperature change for the left wheel. And then the middle wheel will control tint. Then the right wheel will control that offset, which is kind of like brightening the entire image, not just parts of it. Right there, you also have a log button, which enables you to change the wheels into a logarithmic mode, where you have high and low thresholds with a pivot point that you can also adjust. Then there is the viewer button, which lets you watch whatever you're looking at, a clip, the timeline in full screen. That's really the main part of the panel. That's where your hands are going to rest most of the time, but let's continue through the rest without having me go through every single button. Otherwise this video would be like an hour long, but I will hit some of the main highlight buttons that you will be using a lot. Above the wheel, you then have 12 dials. These dials are Y lift, Y gamma, Y gain, contrast, pivot, mid detail, color boost, shadows, highlights, and saturation, hue, loom mix. Then still in the bottom half, on the right side, you have buttons for grabbing and playing stills, undo and redo, looping a clip, and more. In the bottom right are previous and next buttons for nodes, frames, clips, plus a playback and stop button. One cool thing they mentioned to me while I was getting a demo over the phone of this was that they integrate changes based on user feedback. So some of the buttons they've already changed are, if you hold next frame, it takes you to the last frame. And if you hold previous frame, it takes you to the first frame. Also, if you hold reset, then it will clear all of the nodes instead of having to click all the individual nodes that you're making all of your color adjustments on and deleting them individually. That's it for the bottom half, which like I said, is the same as the micro version for $1,000. The extra $2,000 gets you this top half here. On the top half, you have a set of buttons on the left, a set of buttons on the right, and you have two screens with buttons above them and dials below them. The buttons on the left side are for all of the tools on the color page. And then when you press those buttons, the two screens change depending on which button you pressed. So for example, if you press the curves button, then the screens will give you the control over 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 on the curve controls. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single button and show you what they all do. That's a more detailed video that someone else can make. I just wanna give you the brief overview of what this is and who these are for. If you're already a heavy DaVinci Resolve user, you'll probably know which things you use the most and you can look to see if there are buttons for those things. You are still going to have to use your mouse and keyboard when you're using these panels. And when I talked to the Blackmagic Design rep, he gave me some percentage averages of how much you'll have to use your mouse and keyboard to do things that are hidden in menus or you'll have to type something. And he said with the advanced panel, the $30,000 panel, probably only two to 5% of the time do you need to use a keyboard or mouse. With the mini panel, the $3,000 version, that's more like 30%. So there are things hidden in the menus or specific things for node adjustments and you know, putting LUTs on things, saving LUTs maybe. Those types of things you're gonna have to get into the menu or right click or what have you. So about 30% 30, 30 of the time, you're gonna have to use your mouse keyboard. If you're on the micro, the smaller one, he said about 70% of the time, you're gonna have to use your mouse keyboard. But that one's also a little bit smaller. So you can have your keyboard maybe directly in front of it and then you have the panel behind it. But with this one, the mini, probably gonna have to put your keyboard over to the left side to have enough room for this thing on a normal desk. So who do I think these panels are for? If you're just getting started with Resolve or getting into color grading more seriously and you wanna have more fine-tuned controls and be faster at color grading and you're just getting started, i check out the micro panel at $1,000. If you are taking this more seriously, if you're spending a lot of your time color grading, you potentially wanna do it full time, then I would get the mini panel. It's a little bit too big, a little bit too much, and probably a little bit too much money. Unless you know what you're gonna use that top row for already, you probably don't need the $3,000 version. I would start with the $1,000 version. If you don't use DaVinci Resolve already, or you don't plan to, what? 
why why are you still watching this i, t I told you it doesn't work with the other software but okay um there are other options out there i know tangent makes something similar with the knobs and the wheels that I think works with Premiere and Final Cut. I don't know, I haven't tested those ones yet, so I can't give you my opinions or experiences, but you can look into those. Um, this is built specifically for Resolve, which to me, and in my experience, using all editing software like Final Cut, Premiere, and Resolve, Resolve has the best color controls out there. So if you are wanting to get into color grading and get better at it beyond the base controls that you get, in something like Final Cut or Premiere, spending $1,000 on the micro panel might be the way to go to you know, improve your skills and get better at it. Thank you Blackmagic Design for sending this to me to borrow and review. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.